As a person of color going into a museum and not seeing myself, on some level says that I'm not important. I am angry that we're not represented, but I'm not, you know, like mad mad. I'm just like, well, let me do something that's proactive that, you know, is res response to the situation. Everybody's called to do something different. What brought me to Santa Barbara, um, I'm originally from Los Angeles. My family moved there around 1912. Um, came to uh, UCSB. I graduated in 2018 and stayed on. As an artist that works in multiple media, I collect a, a lot of different things. Um, and each genre needs, uh, you know, particular a uh, set of tools, so with that, one needs uh, a lot of space. There's uh, multiple, you know, uh, subjects going on in here. I was at the Musée d'Orsay and I saw these three busts by the sculptor uh, Cordier, and he created these magnificent busts, a very proud, beautiful black people, you know, Africans. Uh, in, the, in a very stately form. How have I, you know, with all of these decades as an artist, not recognized that, you know, we were missing in the scheme of, of history. So I call them uh, missing images of my ancestors from great museums. So these pieces here are to, to fill that void. Uh, you're seeing my indigo paintings, it's a new series. Uh, and that's inspired by my indigenous heritage because it's all painted intuitively, um, inherently have, I think, this genetic aspect of story uh, uh, emerge in the pieces themselves. So I see this wolf who is taking on, I can't tell this other character through here, but there's sort of a battle going on and it's like a spear, gun, so, oh, this is important. This is my project with uh, Dr. Henry Oster. He passed away two years, but I created this sculpture based on a sculpture that he made when he was uh, liberated from a camp in Auschwitz by African-American soldiers. So I said, well, I'd like to recreate your sculpture. This is his piece, you know, opening the doors to freedom. And then my recreation of that is this piece, and we're hoping still to put it in the um, Museum of Tolerance. A lot of my work is, is about, you know, acknowledging the human being as a person as opposed to an event. You know, it's a metaphor, an example, you know, of how slaves were shipped, obviously not upside down, but their lives felt upside down. This whole installation talked about the journey of Africans to America and also, you know, the first person narratives of slaves in America. That made me think of my ancestors who were slaves and I just felt like I wanted to give an homage, so the stories just kept growing and growing and growing. Grandmother, who's pregnant with my mother, is standing her, next to her grandmother, who was an indentured slave. So when I put it in that context, and then relatives that were slave, she was a slave, he was a slave. Everyone's here is a slave except for G. Um, S. B. W. May, who was an entrepreneur. Just starting with her, you know, it's like, wow, I, I'm facing an image of an ancestor who was enslaved. It sent me on this mission to want to examine more, you know, of American history and. You know, how all of this, we start out with this great idea, and George Washington, you own 300 slaves. Right here in America, my ancestry, my heritage, those 400 years were happening here. You know, this history is so much the underpinnings of what we're facing today with this extreme racism. You know, you can't escape 400 years of slaves. So the, the other part of the narrative is about resilience, you know? Um, Having survived that, what does that say about the strength in me? My fight is, you know, even stronger. Having them as, as an example, of, and it, it, it may be naive to be optimistic, but, you know, I've seen and I've experienced, you know, moments of humanity that, that just gives me hope. And that's why I look to, to heroes like Dr. King. How come he just didn't sit down and say, let's have Sunday dinner, you know, let somebody else do it? Not everybody can give up.
You gotta stay in the game. All right, we are moving on.